Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yanyan. Today I want to get into the only means of salvation. Jesus Christ is our mediator. God is on one side is perfect. Man's on the other side is totally imperfect. We need somebody to join us together because God can't unite with us and I can't unite with him. But somebody between us can pull us together. It's the mediator, Jesus Christ. One mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Let's go to the word of God and find out about him today. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. Great to have you here today. Uh, if you want to open up to a scripture, we're going to go to Job chapter 9 today, take a look at verses 2 and 3, and then verses 32 and verse 33. And we're going to open and talk about Jesus Christ as the way. He's always been the way. And even the uh, Christianity back in the book of Acts was called the way because it's so centered around Jesus Christ himself. And we can honestly say today, I know the way, not a way, I know the way to eternal life. His name is Jesus Christ. And Jesus even said, I am the way, the truth and the life. But as you're finding that verse of scripture, we're gonna talk today about I am the way. And really this is a study of Jesus Christ as our mediator. There's just one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Everything's gonna center around the fact there's really only one way to go to heaven. There's only one mediator between God and man. There's only one who died for us. There's only one that can show us the way to heaven and to eternal life here in this life. I have a series called Our Redemption, and that's what we're offering here at the break. At halftime, they'll come on and tell you how you can have this CD and uh, the CD series and what a great blessing it'll be to your life. And this is a lesson out of this particular series. And I know it's gonna be a great blessing to you because there's many other subjects that surround this, but today we're gonna get right down to the nitty gritty. We're gonna talk about how do I get to heaven and uh, what is the way for me to go to heaven? Job chapter nine. In this particular chapter, Job was a little ticked off at God. He was upset with him. Nothing seemed to be working right. He was griping and complaining it seemed like God wasn't there doing what Job wanted him to do. And he starts out in verse two saying this, I know this is so of a truth, but how can a man be righteous with God? Notice this, I know he can be, I just don't understand it. How can a man be righteous before God? The reason why in verse three, if one wished to contend with him, he could not answer him one time out of a thousand. The reason I don't understand how I could ever be righteous before God is I'm human, he's God. I'm messed up. He's perfect. I'm ignorant. He knows everything. I think he said a minimum. God could ask me a thousand questions of which I have no answer. There's a few times in the book of Job this is brought out. Uh, you know, Job was getting kind of cocky with God and God said, okay, where were you when the morning stars sang for joy? And that referring to whenever creation started and the angels were rejoicing over what God created, but man wasn't even here yet. And so he has to go, well, I don't know. He asked him some more questions. It comes down to it. What Job is saying here, I think there's possibly a minimum of a thousand questions God could ask me. I wouldn't have any idea what the answer was. What is the reason for verse two and three? Why is he saying, if I would contend with him, go to court with him, argue with him, I couldn't answer him one time out of a thousand. It's found in verse 32 and verse 33. For he's not a man as I am, that I may answer him that we should go to court together, or neither is there any mediator between us, one who may lay his hand on us both. Here's the problem. I'm human, he's divine. I'm imperfect, he's perfect. He says on top of that, if we did go to court, he'd win definitely hands down. He says, neither do I have an attorney. I could turn to a mediator that could help me get together with God. Let me tell you what this mediator is. Uh, one translation calls it an umpire. I think the King James says, neither is there any daysman between us that may lay his hand on us both. And in all the cases, it's referring to somebody that is as smart as the person I'm suing or is suing me. And on the other hand, as smart as I am and bring, bring these two wide things together. That's why we look for a mediator. Well, here's the point. God is not a man. God's not a woman. God's not human. God is eternal. God is divine. We are men. We are women. We are human. And on the other hand, we are not God. And what Job is simply saying is, I'm this fallen being over here. I'm surrounded by complexity. I'm surrounded by the fact I don't know what's going on. God knows everything, knows how I got into this mess, knows how I can get out of this mess. 
And he's simply saying, how can we ever come together? How can a fallen person ever get together with a righteous God? And he brings it out in the verse 33. There's no mediator between us who may lay his hand on us both. Job, yes, there is. And yes, there was. And you know who it is. His name is Christ. Later on in Job, he brings out in later chapters, he said, I know my Redeemer lives and I'll one day stand on the earth with him. He will be on the earth. And he's referring to Jesus Christ. He knew about him back there, though he didn't know his name was Jesus, didn't know he was Christ. He just simply knew him as Jehovah. Jehovah is the Old Testament title for Jesus Christ. And so what he's saying is Jesus Christ can put both of us together. Why can that happen? Because when Jesus came to this earth, he came to this earth as God and became a man. Jesus Christ is not 50% God and 50% man. He is still 100% God and 100% man. He is the unique person of the universe, the only one that can bring eternal God and temporary man together and unite the two together. Why can he do that? Because he is God and he is man. He is God so he can satisfy the claims of God, but he's also man so he can satisfy the claims of man. Like I said, he's not half God and half man. He's 100% God, 100% man. He's the unique person of the universe. Therefore, the only one qualified to be our savior. Buddha is not God. Mohammed is not God. Joseph Smith is not God. All these are people who claim they have found a way to God and the way is through their religion. We don't get to heaven through religion. We don't get to heaven through good works. We get to heaven through a person and it's the unique person, the only one that could have provided salvation because he's the only one that can unite the two impossibilities together. Here's where it really comes back to is God can't have contact with man. Why? Because we're sinful and God cannot come to contact with sin. We cannot go to God because we are sinful. God is righteous and we cannot approach a righteous God. I needed someone who could come to this earth and take my place before God and unite the two impossibilities. Jesus Christ on the cross became sin for me. He became sin without sinning. He chose to take my sin upon himself and he was righteous at that time, but he was the righteousness of God. And on the cross, he took my sin as a sacrifice. He bore it for me. And then when he arose from the dead, he had conquered it. So the beauty of it is in John chapter one and verse 14, it says, the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld or looked at his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. First John chapter one, verses one and two says, that which was from the beginning, that is the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes and which we have looked on and our hands have handled concerning the word of life, that life was manifested as we have seen and we bear witness of it and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the father has been manifested to us. It's been manifested in Jesus Christ. As a mediator, Jesus lays one hand on God and one hand on us, and he unites the two impossibilities. That's what Job was talking about. Oh, if there was just some mediator, some daysman, some umpire that could stand between us and lay his hand upon us both, that is Jesus Christ. I can't come to God because God is perfect, I'm not. God cannot come to me because he's perfect, and he cannot come to me because I'm full of sin, Therefore, it looks like this impossible thing could never happen until Jesus Christ came to this earth as perfect uh, God. He could satisfy the claims of God as perfect man. He can satisfy the claims of man. And on the cross, he became what God the Father could not be. And that is he became sin for us, died for our sin and conquered it. And now Jesus Christ can honestly stand there without any kind of fear at all without any kind of prejudice at all and say, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father, but by me. So again, Jesus Christ unites God with us and also unites us with God. All our communication with God goes through the mediator. This is why we do all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of God's communication with us goes through the mediator. 
And again, this is how God communicates with us. This is how we communicate with God. Almost everything we do, as far as God is concerned, goes through the mediator. And what God does for us comes back through the mediator. Let's talk about this for just a minute. Let's talk about some of the titles of Jesus. What is the titles for the deity of Jesus Christ, that son of God in Christ? These are two titles for his deity. Well, what's the titles for his humanity? There are two main ones, son of man and Jesus. Jesus is a title for his humanity. Whenever he was born and they asked what his name would be, they said his name shall be Jesus. Well, that's the title for his humanity. There was no title attached to his deity because the title was already there and there from eternity past. But when he was born, that's the name of his humanity. Notice who grew up. The Bible says Jesus grew in favor and stature with God and man. So the deity didn't grow up, Jesus grew up. And so that's the title given there. Who was crucified? Well, God couldn't be crucified. How do you drive a nail through God? How do you put God on a cross? How does God die? It cannot happen. Therefore, the one that went to the cross was the humanity of Jesus Christ, but it was perfect humanity perfect humanity, which was born of a virgin outside the curse on all mankind, but then he resisted temptation throughout his entire lifetime and never sinned one time. And when he hung on the cross, he said on the cross that it was finished. Everything had been fulfilled. He kept every jot and tittle of the word of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5, there at the birth of Jesus from his deity, he spoke out and said, I have come to do your will, O God. I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will. And he kept every one of the commandments of God. He kept every one of the prophecies and he fulfilled every sacrifice when he came and on the cross when he said, it is finished, it is over. That was the work of him on the cross. Oh, his work wasn't yet totally done till he sat down at the right hand of the Father, but everything according to the word of God, every promise of the word of God was fulfilled in that moment. And he said, it is finished. That was his humanity dying for us. It wasn't deity that died on the cross because deity can't die. Deity is eternal life. How do you kill eternal life? On the cross, Jesus again was there. He was God. How do you kill God? He cannot be killed. What died for us was the humanity and the perfect humanity of Jesus Christ. He died on our behalf. So whenever he was risen from the dead, it wasn't God that was raised from the dead. It was humanity that was raised from the dead with a resurrection body. In fact, the angel standing outside of that tomb had it exactly right when the women came. The angel said, we know that you seek Jesus who was crucified, not Christ, Jesus, who was crucified. So if son of God and Christ is a title for his deity and son of man and Jesus is a title for his humanity, then what is a title for his union? Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Whenever you see that, it's simply talking about the two working together as one. And that's exactly what they did. Jesus Christ is the one, the only mediator for man to come to God and for God to come to man. I'll see you right after the break. Job asked the question, but how can a man be righteous with God? On our own, not one of us can ever approach God. A sinful human cannot be joined to a righteous God. A mediator must come in between and draw the two together. The cross of Jesus is where God and man meet. The only thing that can unite man with God is the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Our Redemption is an in-depth study on the redemptive work of Jesus Christ by Pastor Bob Yandian. Message titles include The God-Man, Son of the Living God, The Character of God, The Virgin Birth, Jesus, Our Scapegoat, The Heart of the Earth, and Reconciled to God. To order Our Redemption, visit our website at bobyandian.com. John 1.1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Without the Word of God, our lives would be unstable and without direction. There would be no hope for believers or, for that matter, the entire world. In this seven-part series, Pastor Bob Yandian emphasizes and explains the vital necessity of the Word of God in the life of every believer. Sermon titles include A More Sure Word of Prophecy, The Inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God's Reputation, the wisdom of God's Word, the merchandise of wisdom, 
Wisdom, Riches, and Honor, and Jesus, Our Wisdom. To order, go to bobbyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Let's again take a look at the titles that I just talked about. Titles for the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son of God, and Christ. These are titles for his deity. And sometimes he was addressed as the Son of God. Sometimes he was addressed as Christ. If they're talking about that, they're talking about his deity. If they're talking about his humanity, then that's the Son of Man and Jesus. Jesus was a title for his deity. He never had that title. He never carried that until he came to this earth and Mary said, no, his name is Jesus. And that's what the angels even said. His name shall be called Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So there's deity, Son of God and Christ. There's humanity, Son of Man and Jesus, but there's his union. And the union is Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus, whichever way you know the wording of it is in that sentence. But even then, there's reason why one comes before the other. If the uh, action of the verse is from man toward God, then the the uh, uh, then the title has to be Jesus Christ because it's emphasizing his humanity over his deity of which we operate through his humanity and by deity, he can bring it to the Father. If it's listed as Christ Jesus, then again, it's talking about his combination, his union, but putting more emphasis on his deity than his humanity. Listen, let's give you an example. If the action of the verse is from me toward God, he'll be called Jesus Christ. And for this cause, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So humanity is mentioned first because it's through that I have access to the Father. But when the when the action of the verse is from God toward me, Christ is mentioned before Jesus. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by or through Christ Jesus. Jesus. I think it's interesting too. There's some times where the deity is not mentioned and only his humanity is, but yet it seems like the action of the verse should mention the fact that he is God. And really that's not true. Think about this. Jesus Christ did not heal because he was deity. He healed through his humanity. In fact, if he healed because he was God, why did he have to wait till he was 33 years old and anointed by the Holy Spirit to do so? He was deity at eight years old, five years old, 12 years old. He didn't walk into the temple at 12 years old and start performing miracles. He never performed a miracle till after he was anointed by the Holy Spirit and turned water into wine. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Nazareth. Interesting. Again, he healed because he was humanity. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Jesus healed because he was a human being anointed by the Holy Spirit to set it up before us. After I'm gone, you as human beings can do miracle signs and wonders in the same name, that's Jesus, and God can do it for you. If God could anoint Jesus of Nazareth and heal, he can anoint Bob of Tulsa for healing. Why? Because Jesus, listen, deity didn't come from Nazareth. Jesus came from Nazareth. That's where he was born in that area and raised in that area. And that's why, again, he's called Jesus of Nazareth. And so God anointed a human being with the Holy Spirit who went about doing good. And Jesus promised us that same anointing can come on you. That's why I want you to go to the upper room before you ever step out, because you're not just going to preach the gospel with your mouth. You're going to administer it through the deeds of laying on of hands, casting out devils. And just as I did it, you can do it too. In fact, you're going to do more than I ever did. I'm only here for three years doing what I'm doing right now. You're going to be here for thousands of years, although he didn't say that. He said, you'll do many more. Jesus Christ is the one and only mediator for man to get to God. There's no other means for getting to God. Second Timothy chapter two, verses five and six, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for us all. So this mediator is talking about from God toward 
toward us, and therefore he's called Christ Jesus. But he's also called a man. Notice we come to God, and the one who died for us was the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ and conquered on the cross our sin. There's only one mediator for all of mankind to reach God, and that's only Jesus Christ. He's the only mediator for everyone. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 says this, there is salvation in no other name. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And again, except through the name of Jesus Christ himself. Acts chapter four and verse 12. I was sitting on a plane one time. There was a lady sitting next to me. And I love to witness on planes because they can't go anywhere. And my usual thing I did on that day, I just opened up, you know, and say, hi, you know, and, and you know, where are you from? And I said, what do you do? And this lady started telling me that she was a professor and she named the university. And I knew right, right away it was a big liberal university. And she was going on and on about the impact of the university and all that stuff. And, and finally she got through and she told me what she taught and her professorship and all that. And then she said, what do you do? See, that's always the question I wait for. If I ask him what they do, then they want to know what I do or at least get the conversation going to at least feel like, well, he asked me, I'll ask him. And I said, I'm a minister. I, I pastor a church. She said, oh, that's wonderful. She's probably thinking some, you know, denomination or something that's, you know, pretty far left or whatever. Anyway, and she said, what church do you preach? I said, we believe the Bible. We believe in salvation in Jesus Christ. And she just looked at me. I mean, the look on her face was like, oh goodness, what have I sat next to? And she said, I don't think that Jesus is the only way. If Jesus said, I'm the only way to heaven, I think that's arrogance. I said, no, ma'am, it's confidence. That's why he said it so confidently. And I just brought this up. I said, let's just suppose you were lost as a goose. I mean, you're in some town. You don't know where you are. And you got to get to some town over here. And you don't know how to get there because this town that you're in is so huge, so large, and you're just as lost as ever. And uh, so you pull up to a corner and there's five people standing there, five people. And you lean out the window and say, how do I get to, to paradise? The name of the town's paradise. I want to get there. And the lady, and one lady says, well, you know, you're going in the right direction. Just keep going this direction. You'll get there. And the second person says, no, no, no. And turns around and points in the opposite direction and says, paradise is back that way. It's on highway such and such and names it. And the third one says, no, no, no. And points in this direction, said, it's this way. You two are wrong. That's the way to get. And the fourth one says, stop it. You're all wrong. It's this way. And points the other way and said, that's the way to get to the city of paradise. And the fifth one says, shut up. I live there. And I work here. I drive this every single day. I come from where I live to where I work. He says, go down here two blocks, turn right, stay in the left lane. You'll see Highway 112, get on there and go up on the entrance ramp and stay there and you'll end up in paradise. When I look at that guy and say, you arrogant thing, how could you possibly think you know the way? No, I would say thank you. I told the lady, why can't we say thank you to Jesus who just saved us from going down 15 ultimate different roads trying to get to heaven when he's the one who lives there and works here. He's been back and forth for centuries from the Old Testament, back and forth to heaven, back to help people, back to heaven. He certainly knows the way because why he is the way. The universe runs on laws that always work one way. Why would salvation be any other way? The sun always rises in the east. It always sets in the west. We know exactly when the next solar eclipse is going to be. The next lunar eclipse is going to be. We know exactly where the shadow of the moon will cross the, the earth. And in fact, we have people going there. And, and they get there days ahead of time because we know exactly where it's going to be. That's how our universe runs on laws that never change. We know exactly where the sun's going to rise and when it's going to rise. 112 years, two months, and 14 days from now, we can tell exactly where the sun's going to rise. Why? Because we know exactly how the universe works. Halley's Comet will show up exactly on time. And our lives run only one way each day. You can't put anything in your gas tank. Only gas will work or certain equivalents to it. You can't put water in there. If you run out of gas, you can't put other things in there. It won't work. It will destroy your engine. You can't drive on any side of the road. No, there's a certain side of the road you drive on in this country. And when you go to European countries or, or British countries, you drive on the other side. You can't just put anything in your stomach. Some things can kill you that you put in there. 
all roads don't lead to Rome. Well, in fact, that's what the lady said. Well, I just think all roads lead to Rome. I said, no, they don't. The road in front of my house, I can get onto it and I might end up in Rome, Georgia, but I'm not gonna end up in Rome, Italy. There's no way to drive to Rome, Italy. The th I mean, even the some of the things we say are so dumb when we say all roads lead to Rome. And we're talking about, especially about salvation. It does not There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved than through the name of Jesus Christ. He is the way the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father but by him. And Jesus Christ said that but he didn't come here to be arrogant about it. He did it to simply say, I'm gonna stop you from going down all the wrong roads. I'm gonna save you from your life, from being mixed up the rest of your life. This is the way. And in Matthew, he called it the way to heaven is the narrow road. The road that goes to hell is a wide road, meaning you can put everybody side by side, every religion, every brotherhood, all the different ways that people say there is to go to heaven, every good works program side by side, but you look at this road and there's just one way. And the reason why it's narrow, only me and Jesus can fit side by side on it and you and Jesus side by side. There's no other road that leads to heaven except the path of the cross and the path of the redemption of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus is the mediator that stands between God and man and unites the two impossibilities together. So why do you think any religion will get to heaven? It won't. Only Jesus Christ can get you there. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 15 says this of going to heaven. And anyone whose name was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The book of life, there's only one way to be in there. And that book means that book represents eternal life, not physical life. Because everybody standing before him had physical life. Now they're standing before him wanting to know, I'm not going to have eternal life with you. And the whole thing comes down to one book called the book of life. How do you get your name in the book of life? You accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. And you come to God through the mediator, Jesus Christ. There's one mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 20, and verse 15 says this, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. People will not be judged separately. They think they will. I'm gonna stand before God and tell them all the good things I have done. We are not going to be judged separately. We will be judged not like individual stalks of wheat. We're gonna be looked like, like a branch attached to a tree. We were born attached to a dead tree and that tree died because Adam rejected God and went his own way and he died. And he is the tree that we are attached to. And we need to be detached from him and, de and reattached to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're attached to a dead tree, you're dead. If you're attached to a living tree, you are alive. The dead tree is Adam. The living tree is Jesus Christ. And 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22 says this, in Adam all die. So in Christ shall all be made alive. There was a day when I got detached from Adam. I died to Adam and was reborn into Jesus Christ. And I will not go to heaven because of me. I'll go to heaven because of Jesus Christ. And the day that I got attached to him, my name was written in the book of life and I will never be cast into the lake of fire. Jesus is the only one who scored a hundred on God's test. I'll flunk it every time. But when I accept Jesus as my Lord and savior, his score is given to me. I will go to heaven because I'll say his score was given to me. I have a 100 because I am in Christ. Are you in Christ? Today is the day when it's so easy to open up your heart and say, Jesus, I accept you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Then you have found the way. See you next time. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. Join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.